Hello, good good Tuesday evening. I can't believe I'm saying that. But uh, hey, look who's here. We, we actually have a full panel for the evening. So I want to thank everyone for, uh, for coming down, showing your support. You can go to any live stream on YouTube, but yet you choose us, and we are eternally grateful for all of your support. Um, yeah, how about we do a quick little rundown? Uh, we have Frank Coy Dragon in chat. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, we got Hiram Hero, Ida, of course. Good evening, my lady. Ripper92, hello, sir, or ma'am. First, because we had I'm, I'm Gamo last night, I thought she was a he. So, anyways. Yeah, Poppy Poppy. Poppy Poppy's a young one, too, I believe. Young bug, Poppy, Poppy. Poppy, Poppy. Yeah, Brian, Brian Johnson, also in chat. Good evening, Brian. All right, so I think without further ado, you know, of course you guys are here to learn about some coins. And uh, most importantly, we're gonna highlight some varieties and errors that maybe is error, errors or not. I don't know. Uh, we will find out, and we're going to surprise you with it. We're also going to give away another copy of the Strike It Rich with Pocket Change book this evening, and we're going to do it a little bit different as opposed to just saying, oh, yeah, everybody gets a copy. Uh, <laughs> we're not Oprah Winfrey in here. You get a copy. and You, you get, get a book, and you get a book. Not you. Everybody to do their share. <laughs> So at the uh, at the end of the stream, uh, before we say our good nights, we are going to throw out a trivia question. The first one to get it correct wins the book. Uh, if you don't win tonight, I wouldn't worry about it because we're going to be doing more of these all throughout the summer. Uh, different books, not just the Strike Your Rich book, but we have a whole host of various educational books that we are going to um, uh, offer up. For everyone so yeah and it'll Stay go good. according it'll go according to your chat right sean what you see first yes yeah the, the, yeah. Per, the first correct answer in chat will win it so um when, when, when that ha occurs uh we'll just have you whoever you may be we'll announce it right here live who the winner is you'll just go ahead and send us an email to the email that you see above my screen here or Carl in his little banner or Paula. She has hers on top of her head as well. Um, Blues Coins, welcome. Welcome, welcome, sir. That, that, it's a uh, quite a delight to see you here, my handsome fellow. And uh, I think I, I think we did see Amelda in here. Shit, Amelda is in attendance and so is Scott Holiday, Mike Wolf. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming in, Jason Johnson. I'm um, Gamo. I'm Gamo. I'm, 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 I'm Gamo or Gamo? Gamo, Gamo, tomato, tomato. It's a yeah. Melba. I'm kind of curious. Jason Johnson, is your middle name like another J? Like Jerry? Triple J? Like John, Jacob, Jingleheimer Schmidt. J cubed. J, yeah. J to the third power. All right, so how about we go ahead and do a quick little intro. Uh, I think we're going to start it off to this person here. Who, me? Yeah, my, my finger is coming off the frame. Yeah, we're going to start it off with uh, Miss Paula. Go ahead. Watch where you put that thing. Hi, I'm Paula Bloom. Um, I no longer have a YouTube channel, but I used to, but I'm on Facebook a lot. Um, I collect errors and varieties and all kinds of mishmash of different things. I love exonumia. Um, in case you don't know, that's like tokens and things like that. Um, I love books. I love to read them and learn about coins and then pass the information on to you guys. And I'm not really that much on YouTube anymore. I kind of every once in a while pop in. I was on Joe Sharps this morning and it was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so but I love doing this Q and A, and these guys are my family, and you guys are awesome. I love seeing you guys every week. So, 
Awesome, Paula. Um, so we did see Dean. Hi, Dean. Flip over double strike. Over strike. I don't know. It's, it sounds interesting. Is his coin one of the coins? On, I, think on it was, I think it's the vice. Oh, okay. okay Dodger. Miami's vice. Oh, and we also have Dodger. Dodger, welcome. I think you are the first coin up for tonight, so we'll talk about yours as well. All right, so Paula, you have uh, you have your pick of anyone to do a intro. Who are you gonna pick? I'm gonna go with Amanda, since she hasn't been with us in a while. That's fair. Well, my name's Amanda. My YouTube channel name is Coin and Card Hobbyist. I really like to collect varieties on Washington quarters, and I'm also working on a collection that has one coin from every country in the world. And that's really about it. That's all I'm working on. Let us know how that collection goes. What, one from each country, huh? Yeah. She'll do it. Yeah, very determined. I, I was going to say, uh, how far along are you? But, you know, we'll, we'll wait for that Wait for that day. We, we want to get to about 95%, and you could just, you know, surprise us with it. All right, Amanda, who would you like to uh, see do another intro after you? Let's see. Let's go with Jeff. Oh, it's me. Okay. Um, hey, my name's Jeff Stanley. Uh, my channel is uh, Jeff Stanley Coins and Octane, and I'm recent. I was doing a lot of videos there for a while. Kind of took a hiatus last year. Didn't do a whole lot, but I'm doing. I'm starting to do a um, a lot more. I've got some content planned. Um, let's see uh, stuff I collect. Um, all U.S. coins. Um, primarily, I like the classic stuff, but I do quite a bit of the uh, a lot of the modern um, modern sets. Um, my series that I collect, uh, Jefferson Nichols, is a specialty of mine. Um, Indian Head sets um, is another specialty of mine. Um, let's see, I've been getting into some more of the uh, half dollar series, and um, you know, I kind of. It, I, it kind of comes and goes with me. Whatever, whatever I kind of feel like for a few months, I'll get bored with it, move on to something else for a little while. And, uh, but uh, I'm, I like it all. You like Should it all? I, my turn already. Next. I guess I have to pick Carl. Carl's not here, but if you leave a message, he'll give you a call right back. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Carl, or also my YouTube name is Seamus Omaha, and I like to collect, uh, is that dog barking at me? <laughs> I like to collect Lincoln Memorial scents. I go through uh, rolls of BU Lincoln scents looking for errors and varieties, and I keep one for myself, and I like to sell and find new homes for these coins to, to other happy homes uh, to folks out there that need them. And I like uh, to sort, uh, hunt through boxes of quarters, looking for quarter errors, Ws, and uh, the nice double dies on those. And I collect uh, 20th and 21st century coins, uh, and I, I like Dansko albums. And uh, I hope you have a nice show tonight and enjoy it. And we've got some interesting coins for you. We most certainly do. After our uh, bye week last week, it kind of left us in a little bit unique position where we have a ton of coins to talk about. Uh, and then we have so much more that we're going to carry over to next week. Well, I guess that kind of leaves me. Uh, you guys know me as uh, Blue Ridge Silverhound on YouTube. Um, I've been around the business of numismatics for over 25 years. Um, a lot of it was kind of carried over and passed down to me by my dad, um, who was also into coins, uh, probably more on the casual side. I don't know how that could be, but um, by the time I took it over, you know, I, I, I became a part-time dealer in the early 2000s, did that for a few years. And uh, yeah, decided, hey, why not take the educational aspect of it and put it on YouTube? Way back in 2010, 
So I've been around for that long on YouTube, and uh, I collect everything. You know, I've done foreign coins, world coins. Sorry, you got to be more PC there. Um, world coins. Uh, I specialized in Canadian for a while. As a matter of fact, I, I could just jump right in and do that whenever I want to. Um, do a lot of U.S. type. Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of spending the summer actually going through and cleaning up just a massive amount of coinage and, you know, just kind of identifying and, and you know, just cataloging everything. Uh, when you go a long while of cherry picking and going through root scents and buffalo nickels and finding all sorts of uh, cool varieties and errors, uh, you know, you just kind of throw it into a box till you're ready. That's where I'm at. I'm going to have the whole summer to work on it. But anyways, I that, that's me in a nutshell. So, uh, again, thank you for uh, joining in. Uh, we've got a few more people pop in. Uh, Shannon, Shannon in the house. Welcome. Hey, Shannon. And Stacker, David Cunningham, Draco's Dragon, Dove Season 91. Is Dove Season new, or, or have we seen Dove on here before? But anyways, uh, we, we are going to uh, talk coins this evening. And uh, we have uh, quite a nice supply of coins to talk about. And I guess we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, is that you, Amanda, with uh, Dodger's uh, coin? Yes. Roger Dodger. Roger Dodger. No, Dove Season's been here before. Yeah, you want me to read that one? Absolutely, Carl. Go for it, sir. From Dodger 455 regarding a 1936 Lincoln cent with die crack. That always makes me giggle a little. <laughs> <laughs> I found this in a roll of wheat cents and I thought it was very cool. The coin is a 1936 P in XF condition with a die crack. Excuse me. Stop it. That runs across the entire reverse. Or I think that's what it is. Thank you for your input. So we're looking for a crack on the reverse. And a rim to rim die break, almost. He's got, there's another picture, I believe. Um, Does he have one that's a little bit more clear or? That one's not coming in very good. Because no. I actually think that's a lamination. It's not coming in real good. See how jagged it is and. Yeah, it's it's awfully strong to be a die crack because I I've seen uh, I've seen bisecting die cracks die cracks I I can't talk tonight I gotta get off this ride uh, <laughs> but um, usually with bisecting die cracks it, you know if it's just a single a single kind of like edge to edge crack uh, they're a little bit more on the faint side um, it's only when you get to the more kind of shattered die type of cracks where you have multiple entry points into the rim where it, where it's a lot more stronger. Yeah, and you can see sections where like on the T it looks like a piece maybe have might have peeled off. Um, and actually I don't know why this picture is coming in so because the pictures he sent were really good. Um, yeah it might be my internet. Oh okay. Um it showed pretty clear that it was a lamination. Would that explain how, how it goes across the wheat stock too? Yeah, I mean, they laminations can go look, I mean, they can be at all, look all different. You know what I mean? But it just, it's got that that uh like i said in the other pictures you can really see it but so it's this, this kind is, of peeled up and this is recessed and not raised on the coin well the part that's so 
You know, on a lamination, it actually will kind of peel up a little bit, like a cuticle. Okay. Um, so it's like neither. You know what I mean? It, the part <laughs> of peeling up is is off the coin, off the surface. So you could feel that if you run your finger, yeah, your fingernail oh, across, yeah. you might be able to feel that and you know and work something underneath it and peel. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you, you ran be, like a Q-tip over it or a cotton ball, it would probably snag. Uh, and you, uh, die crack wouldn't do that. No, no. Um, no, not generally. It, it's not sharp enough by the time it gets to the edge or any, or if it crosses through any device. Um, besides, it, it, if a crack did go across the wheat stalk, um, it wouldn't be as strong as you see it right here on this image. That's what I was. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would probably kind of snake along the the, the lines of the uh, stock and other devices uh, more so than actual a uh, physical, you know, crack going through it. Um, another spot on here where you know it's That's kind of better. A That's better. See on the T, you can see where it's peeled up a little bit. Yes. Yeah. That's coming in better. Yeah, you caught that. I was going to say, when you get to the very, very edge, the rim right there, um, how you have that, just, I, I don't know, it looks like a lamination. Because the crack will stop at the rim. It doesn't go into the rim and into the edge. Yeah. Now, I'm willing to bet there might be a little bit of a, um, uh, what do you call it, clamshell or just a little crack yeah, going yeah. into the, the edge right there. Yeah, I actually have a coin where half of the coin actually peeled off split off so and part of the deception here is that it reaches all the way across the, the coin like that mm -hmm. all the way yeah. across the planchet so it's kind of i don't know um if you guys have ever seen a um a, a split planchet like split before strike or split after strike um it's kind of the same thing. Um, it's all contaminants in the alloy or improper alloy mix that causes this. So they're all kind of similar. I always kind of think of these as kind of like a like a uh, um, like a like a wheat thin cracker or something that's not all the way broke through, or you can kind of see some of the layers and um, um, some of that kind of sticking up on the edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very nice one. I like it a lot. Yeah, the fact that it's bite, you know, it goes all the way across like that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Dodger, it, the coin, the coin is in pretty good shape. So that that all that also kind of, you know, helps with the eye appeal of this uh, of the lamination. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to know what was the date on that. I don't remember. 36. <clears throat> More like a Trisket than a Wheat Thin. <laughs> <laughs> or more like a Flaky Biscuit than a Wheat Thin. Yeah. <laughs> Ken used to say that they remind him, laminations remind him of dry cuticles on your fingers. It always made sense to me because my cuticles are always dry. <laughs> What's next? What's next? Thanks, Dodger. No, phyllo dough. That's really what I was thinking about. Phyllo dough. Phyllo, yeah. 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 That's yummy stuff. All right. So we got Minnesota Joe that has a 1971D half, half dollar. This struck. is a follow-up. Yeah. This is a follow-up, yes. Uh, half dollar struck on quarter stock, and we will uh, reiterate exactly what that is here momentarily. Hey guys, just as a follow-up, I did submit my 71D candy half dollar error coin you discussed. If you recall, I was pretty sure it was a half dollar struck on quarter stock. Good news, PCGS graded it as a mint error on 25 cent stock thickness, and the weight comes in at eight, 0.78 grams, graded as AU58. Thanks for your help reviewing it and mentioning it back in, was it really February 22nd? 
I know, it doesn't seem like that long ago, huh? No, no, no it, it doesn't. I'll be posting the video that covers the submission to PCGS and the grading results soon. Congratulations, Joe. Mm -hmm. You're my hero. I love it. I love it when our viewers submit things oh, yeah. and we talk about them and they end up being, yeah, I love it. Do a, do a reveal video. I always like those, um, you know, when you're opening up the, the box from the grading company. Because I do believe we talked about that and there was some question about it being on a mm -hmm. quarter planchet as opposed to being on quarter stock. <clears throat> I think we, we tried to do the math and everything, and it got to be a mess. Well, yeah. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> well, yeah, we knew it wasn't. Um, when we talked about it, we knew it wasn't a quarter planchet. Um, it was the right size and everything. So it was just thinner. And that, that uh, the difference for everyone listening, I, I'm sure there's a few of you that are probably scratching your head of what the difference is. Um, a quarter planchet is shaped exactly to the tolerances of a regular Washington quarter. Um, quarter stock is the thickness. So they could, the U.S. Mint or, or whoever can, um, can produce the actual, you know, diameter of the coin on various different types of stock thickness. Quarter stock is obviously thinner uh, than a half dollar stock. Whereas the plant is the overall size, the diameter and everything of the, the blank. Yeah, someone just messed up and, and fed the, the coil that was supposed to be used for quarter planchets into the uh, blanking, where the blanking dies are for a half dollar. And Half dollar planchets or half dollar blanks were cut out of a quarter stock coil <laughs> of metal. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, you also see it on, uh, what is it? Uh, and I have one too, a 1970D Washington quarter that's on dime stock. Nice. Which is thin, quite yeah. a bit thinner. You can tell the difference. The strike even appears also a little bit weaker because um, it is a lot thinner of a stock. I think his was weaker also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so someone will look at it and say, oh, yeah, it's a strike through, you know? And that, that's a pretty easy uh, thing to kind of mistake it with. Yeah, thanks for sharing that update with us. You guys, anytime you guys do anything like this or submit anything, if you know, a new attribution or anything, we love it when you follow up with us yeah. and let us know because it's so exciting. Yeah, it's seeing it, it really, it, it, uh, it really makes it special for us to see our viewers become successful and see, you know, see stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I just want to go on record that we have had a phenomenal mix of various errors that have come across the Q and a email, you know, and here, here since the beginning of the year, um, it, it's, it's been a, a luxury to be able to just discuss and share in your guys' victories with these fines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We've had new attributions. We've had coins um, that from our viewers that were written up in Coin World. I mean, it's just been fantastic. All right, outstanding. Let's go ahead and uh, do the next one. I can read this from Ida Harry regarding 1899 Indian head scent repunch date. I finally found something in the cherry pickers guide. I believe this to be a repunch date 001 uh, snow one, right? You guys 1899 uh, Indian head. Is that right, Jeff? 
Yes, I uh, confer when I uh, when we were first looking at it, I was on vacation and didn't have the luxury of my book, so I wasn't able to check. Um, I looked at it, and it is a Snow One. Awesome. Was really hoping you guys would verify this for me. Thank you all. Thank you for all the wonderful things you guys do for us coin guru hopefuls. You're welcome. Ida finds great stuff. <laughs> Yeah, she does. I think, I think secretly, I think, what is up with that in front of the face? Oh, never mind. I just thought I saw another profile. <laughs> I'm seeing <laughs> it. I think she's buying them and then just sending to us. Well, either that or uh, Paula, <laughs> there's usually a die clash right in front of uh, Liberty's nose. Yeah. That's usually right about where you see the uh, the, the, the die, die clash the wreath in the back. Yeah, but I was looking at it like second strike or something. But no, I think it's just a little bit of damage that just kind of looks yeah. like it would be enough. <laughs> um, what you're looking at on this one is just underneath the eight there, and it's a little a little hard to see with the lighting on the on this picture, but just underneath and to, I guess kind of southeast on that eight, you can see the impression of the repunching of the eight. And then inside of each nine, um, if you kind of look to the east of each one of the balls on the uh, on the nines, on the, uh, the bottoms of the nines, there's a little piece of the, uh, the ball serif of that nine um, inside the, the bit that now it's a little hard to see on this one because you know any coin that spends some time in circulation they they accumulate um, you know, just circulation dirt wear grease um, uh, belly button lint whatever <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know it, it in this condition in good i i'm liable to go in there and kind of pick some of that out with a toothpick or a rose thorn or something like that um and kind of get in there and pick that out um i've i've had some success buying Indian head scents that are loaded up with dirt and kind of picking them out picking them out and finding snow varieties underneath um just try not to actually clean it harshly or anything but yeah these, this is definitely the variety um, and it's a what it is. It's a repunch date. Um, they call it an 1899 over 1899. So there's a little bit of a trace of the uh, one that I can't quite see in the picture. Um, and Richard Snow calls it a three star variety. Means it means that there's some some interest. Um, that it's a desirable variety and the fact that it's a snow one um says a lot good job Ida. it is a good one it's a is it a you did determine it's a chair let me look it up let me make sure it's a see the cherry pickers yeah it's a fs301 uh -huh. And it's that, variety, really, that variety must be amazing to look at on a mid-state coin. It, it the picture in the snow book is amazing. It's it's a it's a really neat one. I can actually I'm, my camera should pick it up if you want to show my uh, show my camera. No wonder I like the scent, Chance said. Snow wonder. Snow wonder. Snow. All right, there it is, right there. And this is the uh, Richard Snow's book. This is the third edition. This is volume two. If you imagine two of these, that's how many, that's how full these books are for one series. It's amazing. Uh, but uh, let's see if I can get it up nice and close. You can oh, see there you what, what I'm talking about yeah. there. And it just, I, I wish every U.S. coin series had a book of this quality for its varieties. It's just, I love it. I know a website that will when it's up. <laughs> <laughs>
but yeah, that's a, that's a nice variety. It's a nice one. Hi, Jeff. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Sean. I don't think anybody wants to see my mug anymore. <laughs> uh, what happened? Sean, are you there? Sean? I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It, uh, before before someone reads this, uh, I know there's like a, a, a couple kind of like discussions in the chat um, here within the last minute about coin deal um, between a couple of people. Uh, we don't endorse um, coin sales um, through the live coin Q and A live stream. Uh, here's what you could do though: you could always go onto our Facebook page. Or you know, if there is maybe another way of um, exchanging your information, so you could do this um, off the air. Please, please, yeah. So you could go onto our uh, our Facebook page, um, both of you. Um, it's uh, Live Coin Q and A, and you guys can uh, message each other on there. But don't sell on there either. <laughs> Strike three and you're out, right? <laughs> yeah, don't don't post anything on on the actual live point Q and A site. Um, our um, Facebook page is not set up for sales, so you're gonna have to do that via private chat or uh, private message. Just so I let, let everyone know, and uh, there there is the uh, the link to the Facebook page, and. Um, Feel free to do that at your leisure. Biggest reason, in my opinion, is because we can't guarantee, even though you know what you have and you're positive of what you have and you probably know what you have and it probably is what you think you have. We can't guarantee that it is what you have. So we just don't like, you know, this isn't a, this isn't a sales page, sales channel, whatever you want to call it. It's a learning channel. <laughs> Anyway, it's okay. Death posture is no biggie. Yeah, you no worries. It's all you right. Didn't know. Thanks for going over that, Sean. Yeah, no problem. Another thing you could do is uh, both of you can email us, and then we'll we'll have you guys exchange information that way. Good idea. So, yeah, well, you know, they, uh, some people don't do the Facebook thing. So that's a, that's another option. Oh, also, you guys, if you have not sent us um, an email, we we stop doing submissions for the like this stream tonight. We aren't taking, um, we're not showing any coins that we didn't get before midnight Saturday. So if you send us a coin after midnight Saturday, um, it if we show it, it'll be next week. Um, try to get your submissions, your emails into us early. Um, we had a, we had two weeks worth of emails that we've been catching up on and stuff and actually some older ones that we've been catching up on. So sorry if it took us a while to get back to you, but you know, we had vacation too. <laughs> <laughs> this one's addressed to you, Jeff. I'll just go ahead and take this one, and we're talking about Indian head since again, and we're and it's from Ida, and um, it's from Ida Herring, uh, 1997 Snow One. Hello to Jeff Stanley and the wonderful panel. Thought this might be a fun coin to share with everyone. And uh, I, I was actually on Ida's um, morning stream, and if you've never never been there, I recommend it. It's a lot of a lot of fun. Some mornings I don't get to go on as much as I want since I work um, in the mornings, but I kind of snuck a stream in one day. I just didn't feel like working. <laughs> I won't tell. No, don't tell. <laughs> But uh, you know, I got on and the and the subject came up about uh, some Indian head since and I told her to send this one in. I really like this one because it looked like this one actually came from Richard Snow's um, store in Tucson, Eagle Eye Rare Coins, and it has one of his flips and it's attributed, so we know exactly what this is. 
Um, this is a one in the neck. This is a misplaced date. The one we looked at before was a repunch date. Um, this one is a misplaced date where you can actually see part of the number one sticking out of the front of the neck. This is my favorite one of the Indian series. This this is actually the one one of the ones that got me really turned on to Indian head sense. I love this one. Yeah. Look at that. That's a great one too. That's right. great. That that little piece down, you know, uh, about halfway down the neck from the chin is um, that is actually a number one. Um, that was just uh, mis misplaced, mispunched into the um, design. Um, every now and then you'll see them kind of below the ribbon, below the neck, you know, pieces of the of numbers under there. And usually where you see them misplaced are in the denticles um, on the uh, near the rim. And, and the reason why you usually see a, a, a lot down there is um and i've heard people some of the old timers talking about how they used to when they were checking to see if a die was um when they were doing the annealing process on the die they're trying to see if it was soft enough to uh punch in the date mm -hmm. um they might do like a little sample kind of on the corner where they thought nobody would see it or whatever. And they might get a little high up into the denticles um, just to see if there was the right hardness before they stamped the date in. In this case, they completely missed. Uh, <laughs> they, <laughs> they, sure did. they sure did. You know, that, that, that's funny, uh, Jeff, I've heard that before, but it was such a long time ago. It was probably, Oh God, probably back in like 2008 where I've heard that theory before. So that that's, <clears throat> that's crazy. It, I even also heard that um, they did some of the, uh, the, the tests on the beads that go around the neck right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there's a few uh, uh, misplaced states or whatever that, that go through Actually, the beads. Yeah. Right? It, 1882 is a really good one where you can see the the one in the neck um and it has to be a decent grade for that one um you can see right there you can barely even see any of the beads um but for, if you've got like a like a vf it's probably the lowest grade you'll see it but uh anything above above a uh, very fine up to x fine and of course um you know uncirculated you can see the uh the one in the uh into the pearls or the beads or whatever it's a it's a neat variety this one's just it really is it's just the coolest it's, a little hard to, I think it's a little hard to cherry pick because i think everybody knows about it and they, they they've picked them all but hey you never know always look at your 1897 and see if uh uh liberty's got an adam's apple i i have successfully cherry picked two and they were both like incredibly corroded coins that yeah. not a lot of people really cared about. And, and they, they were net graded like AG anyways. Um, but yeah, the, between this and the 1894 over 1894 um, RPD, I, I, they're two of the toughest to cherry pick um, because they just slap you in the face. That yeah. is how neat and powerful that these particular varieties are oh and uh the double liberty 1873 is not really cherry pickable <clears throat> especially in higher grades i'll say that yeah every everybody and and their and their mother and their brother and uncle is looking for that coin Hey guys, please don't put any personal information in chat. It's not, I don't have a problem with you sharing your email. I really don't, but you never know who's watching and you don't know who, who might, you might get bombarded by emails, um, by sharing your email in the chat. So, you know, you don't know who's, who might be watching. <clears throat> Yeah, we, we don't want you to get spam in your email box or yeah. logo calls. 
Yeah. I know you could bl you blame it on that guy, Blue Ridge. Blame it on Blue Ridge. It's the Blue Ridge crew. The Blue Ridge crew. crew. <laughs> Except no substitutes. That's right. Yeah. Ida, um, congratulations. Two incredible coins. Amazing. She Heck. got it in a grab bag. What? <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> okay, A, where are you going for these grab bags? And B, when are you going to send me this coin? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm just you. teasing, Ida. I'm only teasing. Wasn't this coin in any Rick Snow um, uh, little flip or whatever it is? It what was. Yeah. 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 And that just adds to the coolness factor because it's one of, uh, you know, it's from that, from his store. Oh, in case you guys are wondering, the reason why that we allude these to like a Snow 1, a Snow 5, a Snow 16, is that the attributions are by a guy named Richard Snow, who, by the way, is still alive. Someone actually asked me, is this guy still alive? I'm like, yes. yes he is he alive is. and well. And more than likely, he's hanging around Charmy Harper a lot, you know, at the show circuit. Uh, you're going to see, like, see the two of them mm -hmm. paired up pretty well throughout various shows but i know and you missed seeing her this last weekend by the way she was she was at the show where in sacramento yes oh no way yes yes she was if my back did not blow itself out <laughs> god and i'm still paying the piper right now she sure was i've got my bed gay and my heating pad that i'm laying on right now in fact she's staying at a um, relative's house in Paso Robles right now, overlooking a vineyard. Oh my gosh, is it gorgeous, sir? Well, she loves her wine. She does love her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she, I love my wine too. I just can't drink it anymore. <laughs> Mine comes in a box, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have charming money. <laughs> Oh, that's hysterical. I know. Charmy gets to drink the good stuff because I spend all my money on Charmy's coins. <laughs> and then she takes your money and then gets some vintage 1986 something another. I know, right? I know. Yeah. I'm supporting her drinking habits. That's yeah, right. she, she is the petty lady. She has a website. If you haven't seen her inventory, it's a uh, thing of beauty. It is so, a right, if, if, if you want to go someplace and just kind of gloss over some really nice high-end coppers, um, she's your wool man for sure. It's okay, Dead Postures. I know we seem like we're kind of being naggy, but we're just really that we're just protecting you guys. So be, feel free to send us an email at our email. Um, and give us your information. If the other person wants to send us an email at requesting it, um, and you give us permission, then we can certainly put the two of you together. <clears throat> well, heck, let's go ahead and address this real quick. It seems to be like the 4,000-pound pink elephant in the room. Oh, geez. I would imagine it sounds like that because if you say NGC at mid-state 70, it's probably the new 2021 Morgans and Peace, I, I would imagine. Um, but... There is no okay. commitment by the U.S. Mint to release the other four coins. As of right now, the only coins that they have sold and are standing by with is the CC Privy and O Privy coins. Uh, and, you know, the fact that you say QVC says a lot. I, yeah. I would probably not put any stock into their inventory or what they're selling right now. Uh, be, because of the low supply in the coin market, Everybody is inflating their coins by quite a margin. Change the channel. I'm just going to say it. Don't ever buy any coins from them. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Go back to PBS and watch some Bob Ross. He'll paint you. Right. Yeah. He'll, he'll, get you, he'll get you hooked up with a happy clap. 
Yeah. Yeah. Keep in mind, air, airtime cost a lot of money in order to buy that airtime. Um, they have to inflate the price of their coins. I'm telling you. They, a lot. A lot. Yeah. Do you guys remember the uh, gold plated state quarters they sold? Um, I think they're still selling those back in the day and then <laughs> I'm finding them all in rolls right now it's funny to think oh my gosh that it's so sad i think uh daniel coin help you has done a video about how he'll get people into his shop trying to like sell those to him and they you know they think that they're gonna get all this money because that's what they spent and he's like I'll give you a dollar i don't know <laughs> i was just gonna suggest daniel malone's coin help you he, he's had several videos and uh one of his pet peeves is the qvc uh mm -hmm. coin sales home shopping networks and stuff he he's got a lot of videos that rips them apart yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there's, uh, the coin vault um rick tamaska even has his franklin half dollar show too that he does yes yeah, that's, exactly. you know, keep in mind if you see them on TV, they have to recoup that airtime money, like Jeff mm -hmm. has said. So nothing is going to come cheap. Yeah, just you know, really, we tell people all the time: do some research before you ever buy a coin. Um, there's so many, you know, good uh, resources out there as far as pricing guides. I mean, it takes. You can look up the, the fair market value of a coin in less than a minute. Um, so just, you know, just know what you're buying before you buy it. Don't believe what you're hearing, what people are saying about it, especially the person selling it. <laughs> Not everybody, but it's just best that you know what you're buying. You know, you don't want to end up spending <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I, almost, I almost said something I don't want to say. Anyway. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I would say Coin Help You is it, a fantastic channel uh, from the yeah. dealer perspective. He provides a lot of insight on how, how <laughs> things look on his end. And, you know, it, it's just, it, it, helps, it helps the consumer as well. Like, this is what I want to see. This is how you grade coins. He's a very you know, cut and dry person on there. Um, you know, there, there's going to be pet peeves of every content creator out there. I, I think I have my own personal pet peeves that people see in me. Um, but, you, you know, like I, I like to rant like I'm doing right now. So that, that's what I'm He's got a potty <laughs> mouth, too, let me tell you. Sometimes. Just kidding. <laughs> He hey, did on one of his videos. Appropriate, you know, when, when things get uh, very emotional, was, and pe you know, people are. It was are a rare form. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I get, I get, yep. I defend other people who I think are are uh, um, getting yeah. getting the shaft, uh, especially in this market right now, where it's all, I'm not gonna say it's feast or famine, but when you have when you have the U.S. Mint that obviously has silver issues like obtaining blanks when they have crappy website issues and and then you have the people that want it all to work out as planned so that way they can participate in some sort of arbitrage and make money and then when it all blows up they get upset you know it's like there is no there's no winner there's no um you, you know there's a lot of negativity as of late um and not only coins but collectibles so the panel kind of helps iron all that out. We're very easygoing people. That's why we don't talk about sales and dollar figures. I mean, if it, unless it's a 1913 Liberty nickel, then, you know, that's fair game. Um, we, we don't do auctions. We don't provide a membership to YouTube uh, viewers. We don't offer a Patreon account to anyone. Um, we're, we're here to educate. And, we do. Uh, we do have hats and t-shirts for sale. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we do. Right? I mean, if, if you want the, uh, the endorsed, you know, kind of uh, logo <laughs> on the shirts and stuff, you want to support us. Um, because we do have a website, livecoinqna.com. Um, and, and, you know, um, 
you know, there is money that's paid to upkeep that site. And, um, you know, the money that, that we make off of either the channel or the, uh, the merchandise sales goes to that. So, um, yeah, many thanks to everyone that's, that supports us yeah. either by watching the show or some sort of monetary yeah. contribution for merchandise. And Ida Herring makes our hats and t-shirts and they're embroidered. They're beautiful. They, they are high quality works of art. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Shall, 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 shall we go on to the next coin? Please. Yeah, Dodger. Uh, I, I would say that there's quite a few novelty 1913 Liberty Nichols out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's from uh, Justin Bussman. Possible 1995 Lincoln Scent DDR. You can see it best on E Pluribus Unum. So when we look at 95s, we normally associate the DDO. So this will be something a little bit different for us. So this one's this one is a will trick you. It tricked us. Thank goodness we had Queen Dragon around to set us straight. Actually, it tricked me. I was the one who reviewed this coin. Um, so if you want to go in close on EPU, um, I actually wrote Justin back and told him, I think you might, if you look at that second dot, especially next to the M, I said, I think you might have something. Um, and we discussed it a little bit in our chat and I had to write him back because Frank coin dragon pointed out to us. Um, he has seen this many times and it fooled him at first that this was, um, a trail dies. And this particular one actually is listed on on the trail dies um, website and to tell you what those are if you can see off the tips of like the tip of the u and the tip of the i and the tip of the b um those are caused from polishing of the dies and you yeah, can you see it especially see the, uh, on the e. yeah the uh the north west corner of every letter in e pluribus unum kind of sweeps up you know like it has a little tail to them there are, there are other you know lighting tricks that you could use to really see it um better but i could see why that dot is deceptive i mean that's what kind of what we look for right is that that normally round dot to kind of have look like a uh, like a like a bean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it really makes those um, devices look stretched out and extra thick. Um, on on a lot of the the die trails that you see, they they're obvious. Um, this one in particular, with it just coming right just off the end um, was very deceptive at first. So thank you, Frank, for being there and pointing that out. And I did send Justin, in case you're watching, Justin, I did reply to your email. I did send you the link that has this one listed. Um, yeah, and coinstipated, you're correct. It's all in how you say it, die trail. It's all in how you say it. Yeah. The website's Trail Dies. Yeah, the website is Trail Dies. Yeah. And you usually see these, what, on, on uh, mid-90s Lincolns? Um, I, you know, I can't, I can't say because I've never found one. Frank has found a lot. Um, he's seen this a lot. Uh, in fact, I, I actually think that I bought one from one of our viewers one time, like a year ago. Um, I love how that B looks. 
<laughs> it, it's very interesting. Yeah, it is. It is. I think that might be partially a plating issue, but but even look at the N, the N in in unum, 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 the tip of that. You can really see it on that. Yeah, that's the one that really stuck out mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, dye trails and concentric lathe lines. There's a lot of funky stuff that came out of the 90s and 80s. Ken Potter actually sh showed a video on his uh, on his Facebook group not too long ago um, of someone polishing a proof dye and and ca actually causing these. A TV QVC is good. Kitchen and get some. That's right, Chief. <laughs> uh, cool, dude. This is a 1995P. So it's a Philly. Philly, Philly. Yeah. Isn't it great, David? Numismatics is fun. You can never know anything, everything. You can never know anything. You can never know everything. It's learning is my favorite part of this hobby. I love it. Who would have thought that, that money would be so fun to collect? All right. Very good. What do we money, have? It's fun to spend money on money. <laughs> 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 what you buying today? I'm gonna go buy some money. <laughs> well, we take this one from George. Yes. From George, he's got a 1994 Lincoln set. I recently found this Lincoln Memorial coin roll hunting, and it took me some time to get my pictures in order to d decide if I should or shouldn't submit this for review. I first thought that this might be damaged, but after some time looking at it. My thought is that a second coin got caught into the striking chamber, causing some of the marks. The last pick confirmed my suspicion as it appears to be a second strike of scent on the reverse. Well, he was, he was right in the first place of suspecting damage first and tried to rule it out. He did something right there. So let's take a look at his coin. First thing I see on that side when I look at that coin is where'd the rim go? No, on the other side. Sorry, Amanda, I know she's all getting it all centered. Yeah, see on the left-hand side, where'd the rim go? Something made that rim go away. You want to talk about this, Sean? Long way. Ooh. All right. So what we have here um, is damage caused by squeezing a few coins together. Okay, this is affectionately referred to as a vice job in the old business. And um, what differentiates a vice job, as its name implies, um, compared to an actual like double struck error is that you have quite a bit of uh, not only damage to to the rim area but if you take a close look the lettering that you see on the periphery is in cues all right whereas on a double struck coin they would you know they would be coming off the coin in relief 
Um, so the the damage is in cues and it's actually mirrored. It's in reverse. Um, there there are people that like to experiment with squeezing three pennies together. They like to do maybe two nickels and a penny. So a, anytime you're able to fit a smaller denomin denomination between two bigger coins, um, you, you see a lot of that. And the same goes for uh, sandwiching a penny with two dimes because the dimes are smaller. Um, there are, of course, a very neat error called double denomination errors uh, where you actually have a Lincoln cent struck on an already produced or struck Roosevelt dime. I think they're probably some of the most beautiful errors you can lay eyes on. Uh, but then this one right here, with all the damage, you have the incuse lettering. Um, most of the time, I think they're trying to fake brockage. Yeah, yeah, like mirror brockages. Mm -hmm. it, it's not that easy to do, to do, and when you have lettering that, that that's deep and so crisp and and mirrored uh, to itself, uh, th those are all some of the red flags that you look for for something like this. Yeah, and a brockage would be from an already struck coin. So you would have a rim, something. And look at how out of round that is. Very distorted. But I would keep this as a good example. Absolutely. This this is a great teaching tool. Mm -hmm. If you if you had went out and found one of these, and had probably invested in actual legitimate brockage error, which you could find some relatively inexpensive ones for under thirty dollars. Yeah. So that way you have an example of each. You know exactly what one looks like to another. Um. Yeah, they're, they're damaged. They're postman damage is what we call them. But, you know, they're fun to look at. It's like, what are they trying to do here? You know, you know you've, you've come to find out that, you know, that sometimes they try and mash two world coins together with a penny and do all sorts of weird stuff. This, is all, this is all stuff that we used to do, you know, in like high school and all that. You know. They use glue. Glue, yeah. Mm hmm Oh, I still go out into the garage and screw around with stuff like this. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> why those little? <laughs> That's another thing. Daniel Malone also has a video where he um, actually went out into his garage and tried to um, tried to replicate. Um, if you can replicate something in your garage, it probably is not an error. Yeah, Why you can make it in your you can make it in your garage? It probably is not an error. What I meant to say. Sorry. Have a good evening, Chief Stacker. Oh, bye, Chief. Th thanks for uh, hanging out. Thanks yeah, for thank you, Chief. Everybody. Oh, by the way, Eric. Eric is in chat. Good evening, Eric. Eric. Yes. Moritz. Yeah, those are some of Ida's crew. Ida's gang. Mikasa Sukasa. Hey, Eric, any interesting finds as of late? Why, those little. Hey, Eric has been busy being a family man these days. It happens. Yeah, yeah he's been quiet on the cherry chicken front. Good. Give us a little bit of a chance to find something. Yeah, point flows are opening back up this summer. Yeah. Yeah, I did yeah. that last week. World's Fair money is going to be going. Um, yeah, I, I I hear they're uh, they're on this year. Yeah. Which means I'm not there. Well, they may still do the seminars online, but. It'll be the condensed version. <clears throat> yeah. One of these days. They, they, One of these they, days. They, they will be doing the workshops too this summer, I believe. Yeah, they are the summer seminar. Yeah. yeah I think that they're doing a, the little 
Mm, they're going to do a condensed version too, but I think that they're they're doing the the regular ones also. One of these days, I'm going to go to those. Someday. All right. Very cool. Thank you Very for, cool. Your Thanks for sharing. Faithful, re faithful representation of a vice job. So Sean was the quarter I sent to you. Fake. What quarter, Ida? Ida, are you sending Sean stuff behind her back? What's up with that? She tries. Yeah, she sent she sent me a 1998 uh, Washington Quarter that has some uh, funny discoloration, and she thinks it might be a double strike, double struck coin or something like that. Um, and I think it's just the the color toning, Ida, that's playing tricks on you. Hmm. Yeah, I can see it right now. It looks like it looks like it's not even raised on the coin. Um, but it's just that coloring on on the quarter. Sorry, I haven't messaged you. I haven't messaged a bunch of people. <laughs> I'm so bad right now. That's all right. The entire panel is starting to think their name is Sean. Because 90% of our working. emails are, hi, Sean. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean, would you look at this? Sean. <laughs> I got a Jeff Stanley email. I know. I get, I've gotten a couple. I've gotten a couple addressed to me. Yeah. But most of the time it's Sean. Hey, Sean. <laughs> That's all right. We're, 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 getting, uh, we're getting some new content to talk about on our videos, um, which is good. Yes. So just got, so you guys know when you send in an email, even if you address it to Sean, we all answer the emails and work on the emails. So um, you have a one in, what do we have, nine panel members? One in nine shot. Because he's so cute. <laughs> Ida. Stop <laughs> flirting, Ida. He's a married man. Toast okay. board. Do we have another email? Well, that was all the ones I had. Okay, so Stanley's up. Oh, is, I'm up next. Yeah, I'm going to take a like a two second, well, longer than that, probably take me five minute break here. I'll be right back. All right. I'll start Ooh. this one and I'll even start off with a read from David M. Sorry, had to show you this, my latest find. Pretty sure this is a strike through, but that's not the real reason I wanted to show you. The left side of the dome. Ha! It looks like a bomb is going off. I wish I could do it justice taking pictures with my phone. It's crazy looking. All right. Well, that's pretty neat. Let me make sure I'm lining this up right. So we got a that definitely looks like a strike through there on the front where there was some material in between the uh, planchet and the die um, that got struck into the coin but i tell you he, he's right that's kind of uh what year is this 2020 um not sure of the year the all i all i have are two reverse pictures um it does look crisp and i mean it's certainly a modern one i would i would say it's um you know Probably something brand new um, within the last few years, at least. Yeah, if this is anything like some of the fine quality craftsmanship that we saw from last year, um, yeah. yeah, that's about right. Um, you know, like we've seen on some of the quarters from last year um, with these type of strike throughs with the, the crud, the hardened grease and debris and all that great stuff. Um, that's probably what I would more than likely attribute this to would be that some, some hard grease, something more than just something a little bit more viscous. Um, this one, this, this is something that had a look at, was able to put a little bit of an edge on it. 
Now, I, I know with these types of um, strike throughs, Jeff, that there is a little bit of feeder finger scrapes. Yeah. Uh, do you see a little bit of that on here, too? I, I do. I, I think that is what this is right here, going uh, from southeast to uh, northwest. It, it actually, the bomb going off, that is kind of a good description of what that looks like. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jeff, can you do a little close-up uh, right above the door? The door? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Eric says there's a little bit of uh, feet or finger action there, too, with those lines. I'd say kind of uh, right in there. Yeah. Oh, wait. Look at the window. And right above the door, that little triangle. Yeah. Yeah, you can see a line there, too. Yeah. That is very cool. We love mid mistakes. Oh, yeah. And they still do it to this day. Oh, and they're just getting worse. The quality control is awful right now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you very, thank you very little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I kind of, I wish we had an opera view just so we could see what year it was. So we kind of determined, yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, you know, a, a, a 2020 uh, uh, met lockdown, uh, minimal, you know, minimal, minimal, uh, you know, quality control at the mint product. Is, it, is this Eric's coin? This uh, no, is this David. Is, this is um, MC Cool, I think. David. Oh, okay. Is David McCool? Uh -oh. Yeah, Eric, Eric says it should be a 2020. What happened? 2020. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks. It, I mean, it, it, it's the the design and everything. I mean, it's. I have no doubt it's uh, 2020. Adam, did you mean to do that? I don't think he meant to do that. I think that was a mistake. Wow. All right, so. Uh, Definitely struck through with some feeder finger damage. Yeah, someone had said Monticello has fallen. I like to play on that. Uh, yeah. That movie. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. yeah, this is a fantastic submission, and it just goes to show you that there's uh, errors to be found, even on the new stuff. I like you. I approve of this picture. Be patient, David Cunningham. I don't think he meant to do that. Hey, <laughs> Jay Rog 83 welcome. Welcome. Yeah, you guys, don't forget, stick around. Sean's giving away a strike it rich with pocket change. <clears throat> hey, Paul, there was one that you wanted me to show. I wasn't sure if you wanted Valerie to Valerie Gray? Yeah. I didn't have a description for it, so I just put it's, the picture. Yeah, up. yeah, it's a. Um, so she had, she had. I saw this on another Facebook group, not our Facebook group, and I just thought it was cool because it's not something you see every day. Um, and so I told her that I asked her permission for us to see it. Yeah, there it is. Hey, Adam, did you time him out on purpose? No, I lost. Okay. I lost connection. I lost service. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> so this is from, she's new to us. Um, I don't know if she's in chat. Valerie, are you here? Speak up if you're here. Um, she was kind enough to let me show her coin. It's not a huge error. Um, it's not particularly um, uncommon really. I'm in, I mean, in more drastic, if it was more drastic, it would be uncommon. But what this is, is this is, um, she was asking if it was a grease strike. Can you show the a reverse really quick? Yeah. So okay. yes, it is a grease strike. That was her original question. But what I noticed is that it was misaligned. Um, 
you probably would look at this and think it was off center, but if you flip it in the way our coins in, in coin orientation, as opposed to uh, metal alignment, um, you'll notice that it doesn't line up where if it was off center. So if you, if the off center was at the top and you flipped it like our coins flip, then the off center would be more towards the bottom. This is a dual misalignment. Um, both dies were misaligned on this coin. It's not really enough to make it ha make it have any value, but it's just kind. Of, I just thought it was cool, so I wanted to share it. So I that asked your permission catch. if I could. Huh? That was a good catch. Well, you see, we you know we see misalignments a lot. Um, yeah. They're not uncommon um, on for one die to be misaligned. You see the little double rim up at the top there. You'll see those on coins. Um, and the difference between a misalignment and an off center is that a misalignment will only be on one side, typically, unless you have a dual misalignment. So this particular coin was struck with the obverse being misaligned and the reverse being misaligned. So I just thought it was a fun one to share. You don't yeah. see it a lot. Oh, in case you're wondering, there's no edge damage or anything. That's just the photo being cut off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, not showing the whole offers. Yeah. Oh, Shastina, there's not enough no, of an alignment from one side to the other to warrant a premium. Yeah. Um, usually with uh, misaligned dies, you want to see significant cutoff of some of like the lettering or uh, the date or any sort of devices that hug up to the edge of the coin. So we, we have a much more significant uh, misalignment on one side over the other. Um, that That's where people see the value and something that's a little bit more dramatic. Yeah, but I think it's much cool. Chris Rhodes, Christopher Rhodes didn't agree with me. He thought the grease strike on the reverse was cooler. I think the dual Miss Lima is cooler. So it just depends on, I mean, you could probably get it for, get someone to pay a couple bucks for it. I would pay a couple bucks for it. I think it's very cool. So is that you? Valerie, are you Shastina? I don't know. Shastina, that's a very cool name, though. Eric had said his silver stack is going with him in the cryogenic freeze <laughs> after the kids get their percentage. Whatever. Like, you're going to have any say in that. Are you kidding? My kids, I could, I could write it in my will. My coins are, are going with me. Bury me with my coins. My coin, my kids will be like, will, what will? I don't see a will. Did you see a will? I don't see a will. <laughs> <laughs> my wife says she's going to dump oh, my okay, whole collection in a coin star. She what? <laughs> she's going to dump my whole collection in a coin star. Oh, uh, she's only telling you that to cause a heart attack. Did you just <laughs> increase your insurance level? <laughs> well, I don't know if Valerie's in here, but if Valerie comes in, if you see this later, if you're in here, if you're just watching, not able to chat, thank you very much for letting me share this. I think it's a very cool thing, and it actually is the first dual misalignment I have ever seen other than in the books. So even though it's not that much that you know that much misaligned, it's still a dual misalignment. And it's cool. So so thanks Valerie. She yeah, cool. me earlier. Yeah, you could use photos. You wouldn't need, you don't need to do a video to show a misaligned die. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, as long as you have photos of the obverse and the reverse. 
You're talking, I think that you're getting dye rotation mixed up. A rotated dye. Are you thinking about a rotated dye? I, th I think that's what he meant. Yeah. Um, there, there, is a, there is a way to capture a, an image of a dye rotation, like rotated dye, um, using a mirror. So yeah. if you, you take a, a photo of your coin with a mirror behind the coin, you can actually see the rotation. It's, it sounds pretty jank, but it's about the most it works. way. Yeah, it works. Yeah, in it, fact, it if you guys ever want to send us a, a die rotation um, coin, do what Sean said. Use a mirror and show it to us that way. It's the best way, I think. I actually have a really cool die rotation that I just bought a few days ago that's on its way. Nice. It's a... Um, it's a 1923 piece dollar in an NGC mid state 61 holder, and it's got an 80 degree clockwise rotation. Oh, nice. I'll, have to, I'll have to show it to you guys when I when I get it. Very nice. Yeah, Chris has um, I think on his adventures in um coin roll hunting blog, he I think he actually has a little diagram. That, uh, that you can use. And I think, Jeff, didn't you do something? Don't you do something on your flips or something if you come across it? Oh, uh, I have a video actually on my channel. Oh, okay. But I, can kinda, I can kind of demonstrate what I do here um, for rotations. <clears throat> um, let me, I'll just go back to me. How'd you um, do that? That was very cool. How did I do what? No, Sean Change? did did a transition to you and that it was, was like a pie. That's, ah. that's, that was mine. Oh, that's you. Oh that's my yeah. God. It's just I OBS. Love that. <laughs> yeah. That's this is, is technology, Paula. Whatever. Oh yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah. No, this is just a, just a simple <laughs> um, BCW. Um, uh, what do they call these? <laughs> Yeah, a little home slab or whatever. You know, it's just one of these little plastic things, and it's got the insert. This particular one's got a white side to it, and I kind of used a protract protractor and kind of, you know, put out the degrees on it so I can kind of gauge it that way. And that way I just stick it in here if I think it's got a rotation on it, put it right side up um, on this black side to the obverse, and then the reverse I uh, – do that and i just try to eyeball it and kind of line up what i you know how i think it's going to uh rotate but yeah i actually show on uh one of my videos i kind of show you how to make one of these just real quick and dirty very cool quick and dirty and you can, I mean, you can use like one of the paper flips or whatever just don't you know just don't staple it just kind of hold it together with your fingers and um yeah just something so that you're holding it stationary in a known um zero angle or zero degree or whatever on one side so that when you flip it you can see the rotation in it so you don't con confuse yourself I, I did that because i kept confusing myself looking at them um you know what i thought was a rotation i'm like you know i need to do something so i can make sure i'm looking at these things right and so i thought that up and there's my pot shannon, shannon don't ever use simple and computer in the same sentence with me <laughs> that is not yeah that it does not compute no pun intended no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> all right i think we got a another dime this is from abel oh. Oh, clash. Beautiful clash on this one. That might be listed on Mad Die Clashes. Jeez, I actually tried to look for it. You didn't find it? No, they're not accepting new listings for typical die clashes anymore. Wow. Oh, probably because, well, especially on the modern coins, they're becoming so common. It's really a shame. But that's a beautiful die clash. 
you could see one of the oak leaves clash mm -hmm. behind the ear there. Yeah, there's stuff all over the place going on in that. Looks, oh, look oh that yeah. Right you got the profile there. Man, those dice that's smack. A nice one. That's, a, that's a nice, clean looking one, too. I love the condition on it. It just really adds to it. No surprise, it's a Philly. <laughs> right? I'll never find one. <laughs> Very cool. All, all of you, uh, all of you west of the Mississippi haters. <laughs> I think that's a funny Captain Jigga. Oh, you saw it. <clears throat> that is very cool. For those of you guys that don't know what we're talking about, that's a die clash. What happens is during the process, um, when the dies are squeezing or striking the, the planchets, um, a planchet doesn't get fed in between the two dies. And when they come together, they smack each other. This one got smacked hard. Um, so on the die, it'll leave the impression of the opposite die. And every planchet after that, that that coin strikes will have that clash to some degree until they remove it, remove that die and abrade it off or just get rid of it. Just like the Bugs Bunnies. Yep. Yep. Yeah, just to add to this, you usually see them in the, if you, if you see them, you usually see them out in the, the fields there. Um, see it kind of going behind the devices. You usually don't see them out here on, on the devices themselves because that's in lower relief on the die and it really has to hit hard yeah. for that to show up. This is a nice, very, very nice clash. I think Shannon Smith finds a bunch of these. Hey, uh, yeah. Mike, Mike Holmes. We we welcome errors from you. Yeah. Yeah. Let them keep cranking it out and we'll keep collecting them. Now, of course, I'm a West of the Mississippi hater, so I have no skin in the game. What <laughs> 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 Kind of what we're we're talking that there, Denver has the Denver Mint, which you know if you kind of split the United States in half at the Mississippi River, uh, Denver kind of feeds all of the states and cities and the, the Fed banks um, west of the Mississippi, and Denver's kind of up their quality game a bit, where you don't get a whole lot of this stuff. Philly, I'm east of the Mississippi, so I wind up with Philly coins. So I see stuff like this a little bit more often than uh, people that get Denver coins from their banks. Every now and then I get a Denver box. Yeah, uh, Coinosaurus, that's correct. Uh, this is a relatively fresh strike after the dives had clashed together. Mm -hmm. Especially when you see clashing on, on the, the top of the devices, like you see on the uh, below the ear, usually you see a lot more of the clashing in the fields. Which, uh, you know, if you looked at a die, the fields would be the highest point on the die. So those would, those would have usually more uh, clashing on there. It's like Roosevelt's trying to sport a neck tattoo or something. That's very cool. Yeah. I wish they weren't I wish they weren't as common as they are. Um, I mean they're not like you're not gonna find them every single day, but we do see quite a bit of uh die clashes, die chips, die breaks, um all kinds of little issues. With oh, these. Well, I, I guarantee if you were lucky enough, and some people actually don't dislike this, or they go to the bank and they get a box of little dimes or pennies yeah. or whatever, and they're all of a singular date, like all 2020. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, 
usually coins in that box will be struck by about two or three different sets of guys. So more than likely, you know, there's probably more than one example in that box of dimes just based off of that alone. Yeah. So yeah, it, it would be incredibly common if you came across, let's say you came across your first die clash and your first roll of this box of 2020 dimes, more likely you're going to see a ton more with that clash in there. Yes, lots of theater finger. Yep. Lots of die gouges, lots of, yep. I, I, I think, wasn't it, hey, hey um, Eric uh, in chat, was it you that had the, um, the ATB quarter that was struck through by some thread or something? Was that you? That was last year, I believe. The um, Weir Farm ATB quarter, which was the second one for last year, I think. Yeah, that was yeah. number two that came out. Well, I think Dodger found some of those too on some W's. I mean, the, Eric's coin was crazy. It looked like it was struck through like angel hair spaghetti. Really? <laughs> it, it, it was the, the most nuttiest thing I've ever seen. So did life. he send it to us? Did we see it? No, he sent it to me last oh. year. This was before oh. I, I met you guys. So it was like, I don't know, what was it, like February of last year or something? I don't know. It feels like you've been with us forever. I know. <laughs> well, you know, Eric probably still has photos of that coin if he wants it to. Uh, if he wants to uh, send it to our email, and we can show it next week. I think we're going to be coming up on three years doing this soon. The good news is, we are almost to a thousand subs. Yes, we are. Business is picking up, folks. All yes, thanks to you. Are. Absolutely. Oh, Eric Eric said, I thought it made the show. We might have talked about it last year. We might have. It, it yeah. sounds kind of familiar. It, it, you could use a refresher. I'm not going to, you know, discriminate. Yeah. There's something wrong with that. Well, All right. I do think that we are the only, this is the only um, show like ours. I, I do think that we are the only one that for now, um, you know, the more people that offer education and stuff like that, the better. Um, but yeah, Leo Lick 69, um, they, there are misattributed slaps out there. I've seen. I've seen PCGS and NTC slabs that show a completely different coin that, than what's on the label. So yeah, the, the graders are not without their faults as well. Happens that's all what, the time. Yeah. And that, that that's why I always tell folks buy the coin, not the grade or the the holder. That's that's always <laughs> the number one number one tip when it comes to stuff like that. All right, this is from Chris M. Uh, Morgan Dollar Van. I didn't see any of the text on this one. Um, That's why I didn't put it up and there were two picture sets. I think Amanda attributed this one. Do you want to talk about this one, Amanda? I guess so. I'm not <laughs> really... I don't look at Morgan Dollars a whole lot. Me either. But you did attribute it, right? Yes. I actually think Bill 457 sent us the exact same one not too long ago. Maybe it's been like a year, I don't know. But. If I'm correct, I'm pretty sure it's an early die state VAM 6. And so that, that's that got to be a repunched, at least a 1.8. I'll be back. Yeah, I thought this one was what one eight and eight, or there there might be a one eight bam yeah. and another one that's one eight and eight because they, I, I you know they always have a few variants.
Now, where else is uh, where else are the the markers at on this? One? Is there a cud below the one eight? A cud. Okay, so this is the Vam six, not the Vam A six A, because there's a cut on the six A below the one and eight. All right. Now, is it a cut that covers the denticles or just yeah, like just the denticles right under the one and the eight? Okay. Between the essentially uh, right under the one on the right side. Amanda said it was early dice day, didn't you, Amanda? So is there a difference with or without a cud? It just said the later dice date has the cud. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Good deal. Good good hand off there. And then it also said that this fam also has an unlisted clashed state. And I thought I saw some clashing on that one. Oh, I definitely see the clashing right yeah. there on the... Uh, yeah. Yep, and then you can see it there on the uh, the line there. Do you see that line there? Yep, yeah, right there. That's a, that's a clash mark. Yeah, that's actually the forehead and bridge of the nose. Yep, of Liberty. You can actually see the um, top of the lip and oh, there you, there you go. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and uh, can you look above the the eagle's wing there? There's usually a clash there. Also, if you go up above the wing. Let me see if I, yep, I see it pointing out the top there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the, the Morgan uh, dollars, ladies and gentlemen, is ripe with die clashes. So there you go. Even more die clashes to uh, kind of examine. Yeah, that one is definitely clashed. You could probably see it on the eagle's uh, wing on the back. Somebody opening a bag of chips. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I was wondering who that was. No, I just got a little envelope from Ida. Okay, call me crazy. Is that a little lamination on the I bottom? I think it is. Cover? Yeah, I think it is. There was an eagle. I, I'm sitting there looking. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was trying to. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Exactly definitely. what that is. Yes. Yeah, it's got a little pull tap. And, and it goes even it extends up. further down, so you can see where it extends below that also. That's the pull tab variety. Nice Very nice. Time. Wow, this coin is filled with all sorts of personal. All kinds of stuff in there, yeah. Clashing. Does, it, does oh, this have the clashing on the right side of the bird as yes, well? Yes, it does. I did see it on the other side. Yeah. Let's see if I can better stop me when I find the picture here. Uh, you're going to have to go a little bit more. Yeah. They're pretty focused pictures. Yeah, right, you can see it right, right there. there. Yep, the point. You see the point there at the top there. Oh yeah, that that's uh, that's the back of Liberty's hair. That yeah. kind of like little crux of the uh, why the curls that go into the hair. <clears throat> wow, amazing stuff. Now, what is that below the eagle's uh, tail feathers? There is that uh, more lamination there. I well, think that, so. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's the lamination. Okay. It looks like there's a little bit of a detached piece, and then there's the tab. Very nice. Very nice. That is well, really yeah. Someone saved this one from the smelter. Congratulations. That actually, that makes my heart happy. Yay. And it's an 89.0, which is a little tougher date also. Yeah, it is. It's not, not the typical. Yeah. I, I think 88.0 is more common. Oh, yeah. 88.0 is very common. That's 89. No, no. 89 is tough. Yeah. Cool, dude. It can um, if the person who buys the coin is into errors. Um, if somebody is into perfect coins and wants nothing but, you know, the, the nicest without any what they would consider flaws. 
um, then it wouldn't appeal to them. I mean, I, a, a lot of us, most of us on the, on the panel uh, love our heirs, so it probably would appeal to us more. But God. Lamination errors has always been something that's divided people, only because some people see it as a negative, mm -hmm. while some other people see it as as like a really cool error by itself. But when you have like, and I'll just throw this example out there. Um, let's say a 1926 Buffalo nickel, which is like a key date mm -hmm. with a bunch of lamination on it. People actually see that as a negative and it'll affect the value of it, you know, uh, negatively because of the lamination. Um, with a VAM, people, I guess, want to see just the VAM isolated on the coin. Um, that little lamination piece under the wing, I don't know. It may or may not affect the, the value in one way or the other. Um, but I, I think this is a cool VAM. I, I take it because nobody has said anything that this is not like a top 100. or. It is, like, actually. Like, yes, it is. That's why I'm getting ready to look up right now. I yeah. want to see what the coin goes for. <clears throat> top top one hundred. Yes. If uh, uh, oh, I did want to throw this. A friend of the show, um, CFA, has an excellent video series um, yes. where he did a hundred days of BAMs. Uh, they one hundred. Uh, was a hundred days that he it did was, that? Yeah, hundred days of top one hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he goes through each video he does. He takes you through one of the vans and shows the, you know, has excellent pictures, um, great descriptions. He's just a good guy anyways. We just. Um, value on this coin ranges anywhere from 70 um, in the lowest grade all the way up to probably about $100 in 45. Very nice. There you go. So. And uh, this one's got the clashing on it. I don't know if they would consider this a new discovery, possibly. It's got what? Possibly a new discovery with the clashing. Oh, it didn't have the clashing on the, that No, band? it doesn't list anything about the clashing. Oh, what what is it? I didn't, I was gone. Every, is that the date? The What is the VAM 6? Is that the, oh, the date? Double no. date and then... Yeah. They have a later dice date, which has a cut below the 1-8. Very cool. Um, they don't state anything about any clashing, so it makes me wonder if they would still consider that a new discovery. If you yes, were to Frank. Yeah, yeah, Frank, I'm pretty sure that's the clashing of the eye um, right there above the... I wonder if we can see that E below the tail feathers. Well, oh, it's got that lamination there, so I don't think we'll be able to see the E. I would think it would be, um, yeah, be yeah. a new VAM. They and they may do like a, you know how they have like VAM six, VAM VAM six A, VAM six yeah. B, something yeah. like that. So and that's what I'm thinking. This could be mm -hmm. a VAM six B, maybe. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have the VAM World uh, link. If somebody wants to grab that VAM World link, I know there's there's information on the left hand side of the page on how to uh, submit yep. Yep. coins. So this would be one that would probably be worth submitting because I imagine they probably don't get a whole lot of new discoveries. This one was discovered in 1964. Wow. wow. I wasn't even a glint in my parents' eye in 64. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris, you had one job, buddy. Let me say, I killed the man Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> We kid, we love you, man. Very nice coin, though. Very nice. It, you know, uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, a lot of melting 
around 2009 when silver hit fit over $50 an ounce. And even you could go back to the Hunt Brothers. Coins like this get lost all the time. I always tell people, if you haven't done so, look through your junk silver because there are a ton of things to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you could you could kind of pinpoint Roosevelt Dimes has a ton of stuff to look for. Washington Quarters, you know, uh, I'm sure a, a few 1943 SDDOs have been lost 10 years ago, which, you know, I can't even fathom. Uh, I don't want to think about it too hard. It might make me cry. A among a few other things, you know, uh, Franklin Half Dollars. I mean, we do have a resident, you know, specialist in the series here tonight. Yes, we do. <laughs> but, geez, just look at look at your scrap you might find something that's to be worth more than the actual value of the silver yeah i think we've had quite a few submissions of coins that people have found in their at their lcs in the junk bin and yep yeah i found years ago i think this was probably in the 90s Thanks, Amanda. i signed up for um, oh, it was one of these, and I don't know what I was, I'm, I don't know what I was thinking. I was signed up for one of these consign, not, not a consign. It's a, uh, like a mail order Morgan of the month thing. And what they sent was honestly, it was just pure garbage. I mean, they sent me about 10 of them. Um, I paid a, way too much for them at the time. Um, three of those are actually halfway decent vans looking at them. I mean, the, the surfaces are whizzed and you know, re, you know, almost plated or whatever, but uh, a, a couple of them are actual bams. Well, um, oh, really my, Mike Combs, yeah, struck through grease. Uh, they're hard to sell. I mean, you have to have one that's like most of the, you know, motto or whatever is missing. I mean, it has to be pretty extreme. They are tough to sell. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Jeff. No, it's all right. I was done. Yeah, with, with uh, struck throughs and laminations, um, size does matter. I, you know, I <laughs> but yeah, the, the more um, robust and dramatic both yeah. of those are on the coin. Um, people see it as eye appeal, and they'll uh, they'll pay you for it. Yeah, I didn't announce this was my last one. You'd probably have better luck selling something like that in a lot, you know, like a lot of 10 minor error coins or something like that. Um, because you just, I mean, you know, you can, they're pretty, pretty easy to find, especially on the date. It's a pretty common spot. Well, I go ahead. No, oh, I was going to say, good, good point, ahead. Chris. Um, Mad Die Clash has had the, the, the dominant, the nominal, sh I can't talk. Denomination, denomination. Denominational overlays where you can uh, see how the die clashing lines up on like a normal uh, die clash. Yes. Um, this coin is an interest four rarity five. So that's pretty good. Very nice. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. I four is pretty good. So that's what you want. You want that number to be pretty, pretty high. A lot of the bands, I think, are what interest three, which two, is kind of like two or three usually. Two or three, yeah. How many more coins do we have? We're coming up on two hours. This is Thank my you. last one. Oh, cool. Yeah, I figured we'd probably go over tonight just because we had so many coins. But watch, Paula. Fun. It's fun. <laughs> what? Is it time? It might be. You see the just ridiculous light ring flashing on the book. Everybody right. switch your chat to live chat. 
Um, cause what Sean sees on his screen is going to be what goes. Um, so you're, you know, you guys have done giveaways. You know how this works. You're going to see your name before somebody else's name. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what Sean sees. So, and I have no clue what he's doing. I don't think any of us do. All right. So it's real simple. I'm going to allow you guys, whoever is watching and listening to take a moment and open up your um, your search engine, whether it's Google or Yahoo, because I'm a or your Red Book or whatever you know educational tool you have. Other than us, I'm going to ask you the mintage of a very specific coin. You just need to type in the mintage of this coin in chat. The first one that pops it up wins a copy of the brand new Striker Rich with Pocket Change. Do you want to put go in the chat and let them That's what I would can't do. guess until after you type go in the chat? That's a great Ask idea. The question yeah. Then. Yeah. So I, I will post the word go in all caps. Uh, the moment that that pops up, you could go ahead and uh, type it in. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and throw out the question for tonight. And the vintage of the coin that I need the exact number on um is going to be a 1926s buffalo nickel and go first one to pop it up don't type it in adam you can't guess (laughs) smile 1926s buffalo nickel it's a good one too he wants the mintage I got it. Snap. Yeah, I see it. Uh-oh. Yeah. It uh, looks like uh, our winner is going to be Mr. Shannon Smith this evening. That's what yep. I see. That's what I see on my end. Yep. Shannon? Yep. Congratulations. You know what to do. <laughs> Go ahead and email us your uh, your information. I'll get this book out for you tomorrow. Eric's guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you work here. (laughs) You work here. You can't win. (laughs) Yeah, you you work here. (laughs) That information was even in my red book that I'm sitting here reading right now. It's a 1982 edition. I don't have a strike at Rick. Rick. Well, that looks like vintage seventies, eighties, or something. I, I just happen to have it here at my desk. It, this is, believe it or, a little history. This is what was in my stocking when I was twelve years old that started all my trouble. Oh, nice. Very cool. <laughs> this edition right here, and a little trivia: the nineteen thirty-seven D three-legged in that year in. Good was only worth one hundred and seventy-five dollars. Wow, that was a lot of money back then. Yeah, well, the printed value in the two thousand twenty-one is four fifty, so it's gone up a few dollars. Yeah. So I think Amanda has something that she's going to be giving away one of these weeks, and it's cool. Amanda, you want to tell them, Vanna? <laughs> Tell them what they could win, Vanna. They might Copy could win the a Walter Breen's complete encyclopedia of U.S. and colonial coins. Wow. That is an awesome book. That is one of these books, you guys. Very nice. And this is, this is like, uh, everybody should own one of these, but they are not cheap. That is a heavy hitter book. Yes. Even even I don't have one. I can read about two pages of this before I have to stop. It's very, very, very detailed. It's the serious it, collector's book. <laughs> and it, it and it's still really good uh, information. Absolutely. 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 It's and the true question to win that book will be a question out of that's only in that book. (laughs) (laughs) 
Right. <laughs> Buy the <terrible>. book. <laughs> So that is very, and that is from Amanda because she bought that book and she wants to give it away to somebody. So that was very nice of you, Amanda. <coughs> Sorry, you guys took the bone spit. This is a really cool book. The trivia question could be, who is the book de dedicated to? It's by... Bowers. Bowers. I saw one of those on eBay. Oh That's a really God. cool. It's a cool book. Very cool. I think I gave one of those away. Uh, I think you did. Last, That's right. I think yeah. I think you did. That's right. I remember that. Yeah, last year sometime. I think it was during the holidays. I, I don't remember. It was uh that's a good book. I, I actually read it before I gave it away. <laughs> That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, no. a little SS Republic treasure. I mean, I, I am all for it. Well, I liked reading about like the Morgans and stuff. That was really cool. Yeah. So Shannon, shoot us an email with your information. And uh, Sean will get that out to you. And when we need information, I don't want you to type 362436. We don't no, need we need your birth date, your social security <laughs> number, driver's license. <laughs> Only if she's 5'3. Well, that was a good show, you guys. Thanks. And thanks for that was, everything. That was a lot of fun. I, I think we got up to as high as 60 guests. Nice. We did. Make, we sure did. You hit, make sure you hit that thumbs up before you leave, you guys. And if you Tell haven't subscribed, friends. make sure you subscribe. Yes, and subscribe, like, and subscribe. Leave a comment after the video. Um, anything, any suggestions, um, any complaints, you can forward them to uh, Blue Ridge Silverham that way. Yeah, yeah, you, you could go ahead and submit your inquiry to the uh, complaint department. Thanks that's for coming, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it was a it was a slice of heaven this evening to talk about coins. One of my favorite times of the week. Sorry, sorry again that we couldn't do this last night. Yeah. And um, yeah, sorry to Jessica and Chuck because I know you guys are doing you know an auction. Um, but anyways, yeah, that was great. Thank you guys for uh, for everything and for the new people. Yay, that showed up. That yeah, I saw some new people in the chat tonight, so that's good. Lots of yep. them. Yeah. Oh, if you know anybody that wants to learn about coins or they have questions about coins, if you see people in other streams asking questions about coins, let them know that we're here every Monday, except for the last Monday of every month. Um, shoot them our email. We love helping you guys out, and it's totally free. So. Stanley, no, no one's complaining. We don't complain here. It's just, if we it's don't know the out. answer, we find it out for you. We don't exactly. ever guess. Anyway, Chad, any, uh, any closing thoughts or questions? We have exactly one minute and 55 seconds. <laughs> Hi, Victoria. Hi, Victoria. She's been quiet. Yeah. Uh, we didn't see Amber on this evening, huh? No, we didn't see Amber. Probably on text auction tonight. Yeah, Amber's probably Jessica could, said she wasn't sure she was going to be able to help Chuck out tonight, so Amber's probably over there helping him out. Okay, cool. Yeah, she'd probably be over there anyway because we're you know we're usually on Mondays. So yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Amelda, thank you. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you again next week. Uh, she's she's one of the newer folks on, so uh, yeah, show some love. For I'm Gamo. Gamo. Yeah. Gamo. Gamo. Gamo, yeah. The 1955 poor man's double tie. Is it still collectible? Depends. I mean, if you if you want to buy one, if you have a book that has a spot for a 1955 double die, it's a nice replacement. Um I, I personally would tell you to save up your money and buy a real one because they're affordable, believe it or not. A couple thousand dollars, you get a really nice one. Yeah, Paula um, did. Yeah, and that's because I, you know, 
instead of going to all these auctions and buying all this stuff that you really you kind of think you might want but down the road you're going to be like why did i buy that put your money aside say i could buy that coin for 20 bucks but i'm gonna stick that 20 bucks over here and yep save your money and buy a buy a nice one but buy a slabbed one then you know it's real yeah exactly from somebody reputable because there are fake slabs out there i agree yeah and yeah, people are actually still paying a little bit of money for the uh, the poor man's fifty five and the poor man's fifty three. Fifty five. They, yeah. they do sell for decent money on eBay. I do. All it is is a worn out die. It is yep. die deterioration. You can see it on every denomination of every year, every mint mark. It's die deterioration. It's a worn out die. Save yep. your money. Save your money. Or if you, if you have. The 55 poor man's, you could sell those and save it for the real deal 55 <laughs> yeah. That's what I would do. Get a hundred of them, sell them, you know, you might be able to get enough money for them. Yeah. Or wait, what's the other one? The 69S machine double coin that people are selling. For sell one, sell one but for $1,000 like somebody did. That's oh. crazy. That was last year. Crazy. And I know the guy. The guy, the guy is not friendly at all. He is not friendly. The seller or the buyer? The seller. Oh. Let's just say he, he frequents a uh, coin uh, coin forum group online. Oh. And uh, mm. he got snappy at me one time. And I'm like, oh, okay, is this how we're going to roll? I, I Yeah, that that's the extent of it. And we're just going to leave it alone. Yeah. There are but two. That, that there, are, for over $1, there are different camps on that machine doubling. There are different. I think yeah. if I find an extreme one, I'm keeping it. I'm not selling it. I wouldn't sell it because all machine doubling damage. I am old school. I think it's damage. Um, I wouldn't sell it. But I do think some of them are very cool. But they are not a variety. This one, this I know that very well. For, uh, for, for Adam, so I'll yeah. let you address this one. Yeah. Um, that way. So yeah, reslabbing coins with unattributed varieties and errors. Yes, that I do that quite a bit. And uh, it depends on who you submit it through. So NGC, they just charge you the variety fee, and that's it. Uh, PCGS, they charge you a the variety fee plus a reslabbing fee. So keep that in mind. Cool. And just yeah, if the if the if the numbers make sense with the the um, um, value of that variety compared yeah. to unattributed, you know, kind of make you know if it makes sense, um, there's nothing wrong with doing it. Just remember all the, the shipping, insurance, and everything yeah. that goes into into um, you know submitting something. Yeah, that's kind of kind of what I do. Is I usually say hundred dollars roughly after the attribution fee and value then i'll go ahead and re-slap mm -hmm. it and attribute it but like a 55 bug bunny and just uh ms64 that would not be worth it to re-slab that coin no because they're so common and the value is just not there for that Hey Paula, your uh, your camera is getting all. I know, I see it. I'm blinky blinking. <laughs> Abe blinking. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Abe blinking. That's, that's like uh, Robin Hood men in tights. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. One of my favorite movies this. of the nineties. I need a new camera. I hate this camera. Hey, get a snowball camera. Yes, Quinosaurus, that was awesome news. That they I know my fake garbage. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, it's good it fakes off the market. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you look at their that article that you're talking about there where the um where they were able to, to seize all of the uh, counterfeit coins, um some of the stuff they seized were <laughs> not mint state. They were look made to look like they were circulated um that's just goes to show you just because it's uh uh looks like it's been circulated or whether or, or whatever doesn't mean it's not uh cannot be counterfeit 
Yeah, you got to be real careful. Yeah. Don't buy questionable coins, not knowing. Not what kind of yeah. they'll, they'll intentionally cause damage or, or mm -hmm. wear them to, to mm -hmm. you know, make them look worn too. Yeah, that's usually the easiest thing for them to do rather than trying to replicate like like silver and luster and all that is to do the artificial distressing. Yeah. You know, which is so easy to do. Yeah. And most of them are Chinese counterfeits. Some, um, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Well, are we ready to go? I think so. Everyone have a fantastic evening. We'll see you. Uh, we will certainly see you on Monday. I, I think most of us will still be here. Yeah. yeah. Maybe <laughs> a couple more paces. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. At the very Christmas least we'll see Amber. Amber. Yeah. Thank you all of our mods that stuck around and appreciate it guys. We and uh Ruth and Queen yeah. Dragon. Show each other support. And Ida. Yeah, David, I, I would still grade that over date, even if it was cleaned. It's just gonna be easier to sell. Yeah. And and that's a coin that's been counterfeited. So definitely, yeah. definitely do that. All right, guys. Have a nice evening. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks again. And um, be kind to each other. Have a good night. Night.